Welcome to our telecast today, Speaking Like God. Does that sound pretentious? Well, it's actually something the Bible talks about for us who are believers in Christ. So it's going to be a great teaching today recorded in a recent uh, service where I was speaking. And then later on, we have a special story of a woman who was powerful, a young woman who was powerfully touched by the healing power of Jesus Christ. So don't miss a moment of these 30 minutes, but right now let's get into the teaching. The present day healing ministry of Jesus. Uh, present day means what Jesus is doing in reference to healing and how he is doing it right now. We're not talking primarily about the ministry of the Toronto Celebration Church or World Impact Ministries or Peter Youngren. This is the healing ministry of Jesus Christ continuing today. And so we read from Acts chapter 1. Uh, this is by Luke, who was a medical doctor. In some of our campaigns, even recently, we had medical doctors actually work as ushers, and they were checking the people who had been healed. Now, whether we have that or not, Jesus still heals. But I read this uh, written by uh, Luke, a medical doctor. Uh, the former account I made of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. So what we read in the Gospel of Luke and the other Gospels is something that Jesus started he didn't finish it. His work continues. His teaching continues until the day he continued till the day he was taken up after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. So we are in a new era now. Jesus has done something awesome. I love the story of Jesus. I love the miracle accounts of Jesus Christ, every one of them. I'm inspired by Jesus. He never, he kind of never, uh, you know, rejected anyone. Everyone who came to him who was healed, I am so inspired by Jesus. But now it says that Jesus has gone back to heaven. And now in dependence on the Holy Spirit, which is the promise of the Father, we are to continue his ministry. And I want you to know that everything we talk about here is centered around Jesus Christ. Whether we talk about increase or prosperity, that's not a separate issue from Jesus Christ. When we talk of salvation or joy or needs in your family, this teaching is not separate, but it is intertwined with Jesus Christ. When we talk about healing, we talk about faith. Jesus is the author and finisher of faith. So there's no such thing as having healing day or healing meeting or healing ministry it is somehow separate from Jesus Christ. It all works through him. And so today I have one principle that I want to leave with you. And it applies to you who are sick today, but in whatever area you find yourself, whatever your need is in your family, this is for you. Here's what it says in Romans 4, 17. God gives life to the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. Let's say that together. God gives life to the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. You know, at, at first glance, this seems foolish. How can you call something that be not as though it were? Isn't that falsehood? Isn't that mind over matter? But we're going to find that this is a universal principle for your family, for your life. Jesus himself practiced this. He called things that were not as though they were. On one occasion, uh, there was a ruler of the synagogue, like a pastor we would say today, whose daughter was dying. And he sent a messenger to Jesus, come and heal the daughter before she dies. And so Jesus is heading to Jairus' house. And, and on the way, he gets de detoured because there's a woman with an issue of blood and he's healing her and conversing with her. And when she is healed, another messenger comes and says, oh, don't worry, Jesus, uh, the daughter is dead already. She passed away. You, you're too late. But Jesus said, let's go. Let's go anyhow. And then it says that when he came there, they were all weeping. They were all crying. The girl is dead. Hope is gone. And this is what Jesus said. 
Mark 5, 39. Why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridicule him. It says in one translation, they, they laughed at him to scorn. They thought, how stupid you are, Jesus. You say that she's asleep. We all know she's dead. What is Jesus doing? He is calling those things that be not as though they were. Life was not in her body. But Jesus operating in two levels. He operates on the earthly level and in the spiritual level. He calls the things concerning that girl which were not as though they were. And subsequently, Jesus removes everybody from the dead girl's room except for Peter, James, and John and the parents, and the daughter is healed. So th there you have it. Let me give you another case here. Uh, Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick and that he had died. And, and he says, well, let's wait a little bit. And Lazarus was a dear friend of Jesus. He was the brother of Martha and Mary. And finally, they get to where Lazarus was, the dead body. And uh, uh, everybody said, well, Jesus, if you had come, if you had hurried, if you'd been a little quicker, you know, he wouldn't be dead. Here's what Jesus said, John 11, verse 11. Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. His disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. They were very positive. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he was speaking about his rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. So what is Jesus' first reaction? Jesus is doing this. What we're talking about today, he calls the things that were not as though they were. Life was not in Lazarus' body. Life had gone. Sleep was not there. He was not snoring. He was not asleep. He was confirmed dead, but Jesus says he's asleep. What is Jesus doing? He's calling things that be not as though they were. Maybe you have some be nots in your life. Maybe there are some be nots in your family. Maybe health be not. Maybe peace be not. Maybe joy be not in your life. Maybe guilt, shame, negativity be. But the opposite, peace, assurance is not. Well, this is a principle of God. But then you see about Jesus here, he operates on the two levels. Some people say, oh, this just blab it and grab it. You just say whatever. You say whatever. No, no. Jesus is operating in the natural world. He says, no, no, no. No, no, guys. He is dead. He's dead. I understand what's going on in the natural. He's dead. But I'm calling him asleep. Because God calls the things that be not as though they were. Jesus did this continually. He said, rise up and walk to people who didn't have the ability to rise, who didn't have the ability to walk. That's why they were called lame. That's why they were called paralyzed because they didn't have the ability to rise or walk. So Jesus is fully aware of their natural situation, but he's calling for something that did not exist in the natural, something that be not as though it was. When Jesus said on one occasion to 10 lepers, go show yourself to the priest that you are healed. They weren't healed yet physically. They still had leprous scars and they actually were not technically allowed to go to the priest. What's Jesus doing? He's calling the things that be not as though they were. So I want to explain, this is how faith works. Faith comes from Jesus. Faith is not a technique. But when we start operating in faith, like I'm going to operate in faith, like you're going to operate in faith this morning, then sometimes we say things that may seem strange to the mind. So when I speak to you and I say, in the name of Jesus, you are healed. It doesn't mean that I'm denying what your doctor said or the pain that you feel in your side or the broken rib or the other, the, the kidney problem or the liver problem or the cancer problem, but we are following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. We call things that be not as though they were. We're not saying that everything is all right. We're not saying that that doctor support, oh, that means nothing. No, that could mean a whole lot. But we are saying there's a higher reality there is a spiritual reality that transcends the physical. And Jesus says, he's asleep. Yeah, yeah, I know he's dead. But I'm going to call him asleep because I call things that be not as though they were. 
We're going to get back to that teaching in just a moment. I just wanted to, I guess, interrupt myself there by making you aware that this booklet is available to you, this book. Uh, it's a hardcover book, and um, it's there uh, for you to enjoy. And uh, you will see here how I present the gospel. And I actually practice this principle that I'm teaching about, that God calls things that be not as though they were, and, and thousands of people receive. So this book can be a very valuable resource for you. Let's show that again, the full screen of how you receive that. Jot that down, and I know you will be encouraged, you will be helped, and you'll want to share it with others. So get a hold of that. But right now, let's get back to another segment of that teaching. As an example of this, Actually, in, in, in Abraham's life, kind of a practical outworking, it says about Abraham, he contrary, Romans 4, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, and not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about 120 years old, but 100 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced that what he was, had promised, he was able to perform. So here it is very clear. Abraham knew my body is dead. He looked at Sarah. I know she's dead. We're both dead, really. I mean, we're breathing, but we're dead as far as having a child. So he's not unaware of that. He's not some, some mindless blabbing and grabbing. I say whatever I'm going to say. I'm going to get whatever I want. No, he's not saying I recognize the situation. But I'm using this principle of God. I'm not going to consider that reality to be greater than the spiritual reality. I'm not going to waver because what God has spoken, and for us it is what God has already done through Jesus. It's not so much what God has spoken. It's what God has already done when Jesus Christ bore our sickness and carried our infirmities, and by his stripes we were healed. And so on the basis of that we say, Thank God it's done. I receive it now. See, so when I, for example, when I quote Psalm 27, which I love to quote, where it says, the Lord is the strength of my life. <laughs> you, say, well, you can't quote that over me because I got pain in my head. I got pain in my shoulder. I got pain in my spine. My hip is hurting. My leg is hurting. I say, I'm not denying the pain you feel. I'm not denying your weakness, but I'm saying we are operating by the faith of Jesus Christ. And I've practiced this my whole life all over the world. I tell people, rise up and walk fully conscious, fully cognizant that the ability to walk is not there. And that is why the person is uh, being carried into a meeting. I call the things that be not as though they were. You know, when I quote Ephesians 1, 6, where it says, you are accepted in the beloved. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel accepted. I feel rejected. Oh, I'm not denying how you feel. I'm not denying at any, any of that. I understand. And for the very reason that you feel that way, I am telling you the reality of Christ, that you are accepted in Jesus Christ, the beloved of the Father. Yeah. When we say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We're not denying you say, oh, I got problems. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. This is hopeless. I'm not denying that actually from a physical standpoint, it may be all of that that you're describing. But we are saying we're tapping into another reality, the reality of what Jesus Christ has done. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When Jesus operated like this, he learned this by observing his heavenly father. Because it didn't start with Jesus. His heavenly father had been doing this all along. For example, when at the conquest of Jericho, which I see as a picture of, of defeat over, over the defeat of evil, victory in spite of incredible odds. How many need, how many need victory in spite of incredible odds? Come on, wave your hand at me. All right. Well, then this story is for you. And so they were outside the walls. It looked impossible. And God said to Joshua in chapter 6, verse 2, I have given Jericho into your hand. <laughs> Fine. I don't, I don't see it. We haven't got any city. We haven't got any Jericho in our hand. We are about to get whooped. We are about to get killed. <laughs> but you see, 
This is how God talks. And then later on, Joshua understood this. So he said a few verses later, Joshua said to the people, shout for the Lord has given you the city. They could have said, well, look at that preacher, Joshua. He's crazy. He's lost his mind. He just says, go ahead and say all kinds of things that aren't true. We haven't begotten the city. We were about to be defeated. So what is Joshua doing? He is acting like God. I want to act like the heavenly father towards you today. I want you to act at, to yourself as Jesus would act to you. So I say to your spleen, that spleen is healed in the name of Jesus. I, I, I tell you, the anointing of God to help you is here right now. That hernia, that hernia in your abdomen. Somebody else doesn't have a hernia in your abdomen, but your disc is herniated. I speak to that herniated disc. I speak to that hernia in your abdomen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are healed. I call things that be not as though they were. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Be healed right now. It's yours. Take it. So Jesus learned this from his heavenly father. So you say, I have some be nots. Sounds like a not, but you know, be not. Whatever be not, health, prosperity, increase, purpose, joy, peace. God calls to things that be not as though they were. Look at this, what God said to Gideon. He said in Judges 6, 12, you mighty man of valor. You know how Gideon felt at that moment? He said, I'm the least, I'm nobody. Oh, pray for me, pray for me. Pray for me. Oh, I'm in trouble. You know, some people still talk like that. That's their favorite thing. Think, oh, if only the preacher could lay his hand on me. I said, smack yourself in the forehead. <laughs> you know, they, oh, oh, if I only could get, if I only, if only, they go on like that. See, and Gideon is carrying on. He says, God, you're a mighty man of valor. Now, that was the furthest things from Gideon's emotions. He felt so low, he was saying and praying. He was even praying, oh God, you know, I come from a very low down family and I'm the least among the low downs. I'm the least in that low down, insignificant family. You'll find me at the bottom of the pile. Oh, no, no, woe be to me. Are there people like that in Toronto? Oh, maybe you're here this morning. I'm telling you, you are the healed one. You are the mighty person of valor. You are more than a conqueror. What am I doing? Am I denying how you feel? You say, oh, Pastor Peter, you're being unsympathetic. Oh, I wish you would be like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, it's bad. You wish you said that would be so compassionate. That actually wouldn't be compassion. That would be just a, a religious kind of sympathy to gain your favor so you would go home and say, oh, Pastor Peter really understands. Pastor Nathan is so understanding. But it's not really the compassion that helps you. What helps everybody here is as we call the things that be not as though they were. You are healed. You're forgiven. You're accepted. Oh, give Jesus praise. One time when, when there was a big army of enemies against uh, Elisha, then God spoke to Elisha and, and he says, do not fear for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Now in the natural, that seemed like a lie. Pardon me, seemed like a lie. Seemed like a lie. Oh, uh, Lazarus is not uh, uh, dead. He's asleep. Seemed like, why, why do you talk like that? Just call a spade a spade. Call it like it is. I am sharing with us how faith operates. Faith calls things that be not as though they were. Not indiscriminately. Not that you can go on and manipulate people. I, I call this person single even though they're married. Or I call this, no, no, not like that. Everything within the provision of Jesus Christ. Everything within the finished work of Jesus, he who took your sin, he took your shame, he took your guilt, he took your pain, he took your sickness, the devil has been defeated, all that within the finished work of Jesus, you can say, it's mine. You can say it over yourself, you can say it over others. Say, I'm healed, I'm set free, I'm delivered. Say, God calls things that be not as though they were. So speaking like God, it is a type of vocabulary. It's a way to express yourself that things may look like 
they are not very good, that they are not done, but we call it done. God calls the things that be not as though they were. Would you allow me to pray that way with you today as I did in the meeting where you saw the recording? People were uh, afterwards sharing the story of what God had done for them, some remarkable miracles that happened. And, and I, I want to pray that way with you. But first, I have a little story here that our producer met with somebody who had been healed and, and put together this story. This is to encourage you. So watch this before I pray. In 2014, when still living with her parents, Mercy fell sick. She suffered from a heart attack and high blood pressure, which affected her whole body. During a two-month stay in the hospital, she became deaf. She could hear a constant buzzing in her ears, but couldn't make out words. Still, Mercy married and started a small business, selling snacks to provide for her children, aged five, three, and two. I was sick and had a heart attack, which exerted so much pressure into my body until it affected my ears. I had to go to a hospital 90 kilometers away from Lodwar. I stayed there for more than two months until I was discharged and sent back home. But I still could not hear. The sickness brought much hardship as the family had to sell many of their goats to pay medical bills. Mercy had to learn sign language to live with her deafness while the doctors kept prescribing various medications for her other sicknesses. After a while, she stopped taking the medications because her family could not afford to pay. Mercy accepted her situation and adapted to her new life, thinking this would be her state for a lifetime. My ear was blocked. I could not hear. I had to communicate with sign language. With the medication, I could only hear loud sounds and they seemed very far, but I had to stop it because I couldn't afford it anymore. Then came the Friendship Festival with Pastor Peter Youngren. She saw the posters and billboards, but was hesitant to attend the meeting because she couldn't hear the preacher's words. She still attended, and as Pastor Peter was preaching, she felt God was communicating to her even though she didn't know what Pastor Peter was saying. Here, this is what God says. God has shown his love toward us that he sent Jesus Christ that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent Jesus to forgive our sins. You see, Jesus said, People don't know God. He said they think they know God, but they don't know God. The only one who knows God is he who was with God, Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, if you see me, you see God. And so Jesus healed the sick. He said to the lame, Rise up and walk. He said to the deaf, Receive your hearing. He said, Begin to walk. He can move again. Your sins are forgiven. At the meeting, Mercy still had the constant buzzing that blocked out any other sound. But during the prayer, she felt like a loud bang hit her ear, and suddenly everything was clear. She could hear sounds, even whispers from far away. Mercy, can you hear me? Who healed you? Oh, it's Mungo, Mungo, Mungo. <laughs> Buona. Buona. I see fever. Buona, I see fever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nairobi. <laughs> I am so happy and grateful with God because my sister is healed. God calls things that be not as though they were. 
Heavenly Father, as I have shared this message today with this television audience, with you as the great example, God, I call things that be not as though they were over every situation, everything that is included in what Jesus Christ has provided for us. I call healing. I call restoration. I call life in the name of Jesus. Receive that now. Let me know how God has touched your life. You have the information there on the bottom of the screen. I want to hear from you how God has touched you. And now just watch this. It is less than a cup of coffee, less than a chocolate bar, less than the smallest bag of chips. And yet $1 per day makes a big impact for the gospel. Can you spare a dollar a day to reach someone who has never heard of Christ? With just $1 per day, $360 a year, you will help World Impact Ministries reach millions who do not know that Christ came, died, and rose again for them. They do not know that they are unconditionally loved by God. Jesus said, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Yes, the harvests, the people are hungry eagerly waiting for the bread of life. Over the course of one year, one dollar per day gives the gospel to 400 individuals. One dollar a day trains 14 pastors in a gospel revolution seminar. One dollar a day sponsors one Bible college student in a third world country. One dollar a day provides follow-up for 1,200 new believers. Because of Christ and because of people without Christ, Please give $1 a day or however much you can spare. Pre-authorize your monthly gift of $30 or more on your bank account or your credit card. Do it because God's love, as big as the whole world, compels you. Call now, 416-745-1820 or make your monthly commitment online at give.peteryoungren.org. I hope you see that that there is a definite connection between that gift that you share and then the resulting impact for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, And so your life, as you participate in giving for this great cause of the gospel, your life is having a true impact Uh, in the kingdom of God. Thank you so much. You see how you respond there at the bottom of the screen. We very much need to hear from you now. So thank you in Jesus' name. You are loved. Thank you. Your participation makes this global gospel ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the gospel to those who have never heard it, call 416-745-1820. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at P.O. Box 62039, RPO, Victoria Terrace, North York, Ontario, M4A2W1, or P.O. Box 433, Winchester, Kentucky, 40392-9800. Together, let's give everyone a chance to know God's love in Jesus Christ.